fine South American cuisine is enticing the people of Addison, Illinois. South America has an exotic nature to it, uh, almost a sexiness, if you will, to this region beneath the equator. Certainly these intriguing qualities would then be imparted into their food as well as their wine. Rio's cuisine is centered around the country of Peru. So while Peruvian cuisine is the centerpiece, they also offer entrees from other South American countries, including Argentina and Brazil. Now we are at Something to Wine About, of course, adore both our food and wine. But to kick off our journey in the world of Rio's, we're gonna start with wine first. And we're gonna take a little tour of South American wine. So a journey awaits us, please join. American wines have really had an emergence on the wine scene, taking their rightful place among wines that are relished and respected. And we think of South American wines, those of us who have come to love them, think immediately of Chile, Argentina, lovely, lovely beverages. How about Peru? Peruvian wine. Not many of us give that much thought, but the time has come for that to change, and our friend here, Juan, is going to guide our journey through the world of Peruvian wine. Juan, welcome and thank you. Well, thank you for ha having me, and thank you for being here at Rios. Um, one of the unique things about Peruvian wines is that Peru has been cultivating vines since the 1800s, before Chile, before Argentina. Um, and Unfortunately, with the changes in government from going public to private, some of the vines were taken over by the government when it, it was nationalized and the vineyards just went bad because they weren't taking care of the, the vines and the ground as they should. So through the years though, since the government has been more stable and it's been privatized, a lot of the vineyards, um, a lot of the owners have taken care of the vineyards as well as brought in some really talented winemakers. Um, as a matter of fact, winemakers from France. Interesting. And in the last 10 to 15 years, they've been producing some good quality wines. Um, dry wines for the most part, um, white wines and reds meant for the export market. Um, the typical wine that's consumed in Peru is the Borgoña, which is a sweet um, wine. Very, if you ever try the wine, it's more like a Concord grape smell. Oh, good, but like good old Mogan David. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> good 70s memories right there. Yes. <laughs> and um, what they do is they normally drink it chilled or cold. Um, so that's what's typically consumed in Peru. The dry reds and whites, as I mentioned, are meant for the export market. And you've got um, some good French winemakers, for example, from Tabernero which is one of the wineries that's represented here, and Santiago Queirolo, which is the Intipalca line, that are making nice French-style blends, like the Blanco de Blancos, for example. It's a blend of Chenin Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay. Wonderful. And then you also have a Gran Tinto, which is a blend of Malbec and Merlot. Excellent. And then you have your traditional varietals of Chardonnay that's aged in oak, and, uh, and a, a Malbec that's um, very popular out of Argentina, yes, right. but Peru also has planted it um, as well. And then you have your traditional varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon, Chenin Blanc, and some Sauvignon Blanc blends as well. Very nice, very fascinating. I love the way that while Argentina and Chile might be more of the, the big uh, players on the block, so to speak, here you have Peru still doing quality stuff and really starting to, to emerge. Yes. And we are here to help spread the word and do what we can to support this fine product. Can't wait to delve in, because certainly our palates will convince us even further that this is a worthy journey. So if you'd be so kind, sir, how about if we get right into it? I will. Um, I, we can start off with the whites. Perfect. Open up. Um, we'll start off with the Blanco de Blancos. Well, this, um, this winery, Tabernero, is his, the French winemaker. He's from the Loire Valley. Oh, very nice. So what he did was he used to love to go hiking in South America. Um, 
and fell in love with South America. And he loved Peru. And so the people at Tabernero gave him the opportunity to start producing wines. And this was in the last 15 years. And since he's taken the helm, they've won awards internationally. So really happy about this wine. Cheers to you. Salud. And to Peru yes. as well. Well, this was lovely. Definitely a tropical nature to it. Yes, definitely. It's got a lot of citrus notes, some lemon um, flavor, lime flavors. Definitely. And that's why it balances well with, for example, the mahi and, and some of the ceviches that are offered here. Yes. Excellent. And now it is Chardonnay time. Please, sir. Well, this Chardonnay is produced by a, a winery by the name of Santiago Querolo. Um, the label on is Intipalca, which in Quechua means Valley of the Sun. Um, and the winery is located about 1,300 feet above sea level. And they produce a nice Chardonnay. It's aged in oak for about three months. And so you get some of your nice herbal qualities from this wine. Okay. Terribly oaky? Not terribly oaky. Okay. Not compared to California shards. No. Okay, that's good to know. All right, we'll give this a, a swirl and a whirl. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to you. Cheers. Was this nicely balanced? You could taste the oak for sure, it's there, but it is not overpowering. Heavily oaked, not my thing. Again, for those of you who do love that, and there are many of you, totally fine. Floats your wine boat. Not a bad thing. For myself, I just can't handle it, but this is so nicely balanced. What do you think, Juan? I think it's a nice balanced shard. I mean, um, coming from Peru, it kind of shows you the type of quality that um, the levels we can reach with these wines. So, yeah. Yes, and I must say what's refreshing about this is the balance. Because it's not overly oaky, this is going to be a very food-friendly wine, no, and a lot of the heavy, heavily oaked shards really aren't. Exactly. Um, this... It, you know, with the menu here, they've got a quinoa salad. So they've got some nice salads that'll go well with the Chardonnay because you still taste some of the citrus notes, some of the acid that's present uh, because the oak doesn't really affect it too much. So it gives it a, a touch of oak, oakiness and hints of vanilla. But for the most part, it's a nice, nice Chardonnay. Yes, absolutely. And now we are crossing the bridge from white to red. And so to kick it off here, Juan, what is our red to begin with? The red that we're going to start off with is a blend of um, Malbec and Merlot. It's exactly 75% Malbec, 25% Merlot, and it's produced by the Tabernero Winery. Um, and it's more of an earthier style red. Um, um, the soil at that winery is more clay, limestone, um, and so you get a lot of earthiness in the reds. Very nice, and I'm a huge fan of Argentinian Malbec, and I know it is a very popular wine with many of you. So how lovely we get to try this from Peru and blend it with Merlot, how fun. Exactly. So I say cheers Salud. to that, indeed. Please give me a moment to just collect myself here for a moment. This is delish. Something magical happens when you combine grapes and this Malbec Merlot marriage is truly lovely. I also love the fact that although these are powerhouse grapes, they are not overpowering when combined. This is not heavy. It's a beautiful, beautiful balance as far as the body is concerned. Yeah, um, yeah so from this winery, their reds are typically medium body. So, and that's a great example of, of what they have with this Malbec Merlot blend. Even a Cabernet Sauvignon they produce, many people would think cabs, heavy. No, it's more of a medium style um, red that you're going to be um, experiencing with the reds from Tabernero, yes. Very nice. I'm thinking skirt steak. Yes. Or a nice lomo saltado. That would be great. And great pairing with this wine. Yes, for sure. I wouldn't even turn down like a quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Red wine, numero dos. Juan, take it away, please. I will be, we're going to be trying the Malbec from the Santiago Querolo Winery, um, which is, has the Intipalca label. Um, this is going to be a bigger red because um, they're located about 1,300 feet above sea level. So the grapes get some nice cooling in the evening as well as some nice warmth during the day. Um, so they generate some nice sugars be before they're picked, yeah. Okay, excellent. It's so intriguing how many elements go into wine. There's so many moving, living parts in a bottle and in a glass of wine. We're talking about the soil, the, the uh, level above or below sea. 
who the winemaker is, what their training is, so many parts, so many elements, one of the things that makes wine so beautiful. Yes, definitely. Um, just the location and the regions have an effect. Even, even the breeze that comes off the ocean affects, affects some of the wines, the salt, um, as well as the winemaker style. Um, their preference in terms of what oak to use or which oaks to blend together. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a science as well as an art. So, there you go. Yes. Where art and science meet yes. in a glass. Perfect. So the first descriptor that came to my mind was velvet. Velvet smooth. Although it's heavier in body than the previous, it does not choke at all. It is like velvet. Yes, um, definitely. It just um, goes to show how unique each winer is and the location is also important as well as the style that's being produced. Um, Peru's making wines that are medium bodied as well as full bodied and this is a great example of a full body wine. Yes, Just excellent. Our final red, take it away please sir. The final red is going to be the Borgoña which is um, what is typically consumed in Peru in the local market. The reason being, it's a sweeter wine. So it has your Concord grape um, style, and it's just um, what they love to consume. Even Peruvians who are here, that came here, they know what Borgoña is. And um, that is something that they tend to order quite a bit. Yes. Good, so we get to experience what a Peruvian would really enjoy. Exactly, yes. This is just plain fun. It was the first word that came to my mind. It's, it's fun. It's splashy, it's sweet, but in a fun way. To me, this is where Mogan David meets the grape suckers that we used to get at the bank drive through when we were children. Yes. Do you remember those? This is exactly it, that Mogan David, wow. And yeah, and this is typical of uh, a very similar to a dessert wine, but just much lighter yes. uh, and enjoyable. Um, really, you serve it chilled, um, people just drink it in a glass, they don't care about have pairing it with food, but if you have a very spicy dish, this would go very well. And if you have a nice dessert, um, you can pair it nicely with, with this style of wine. Yes, I yeah. could see that. It would even be nice with a little club soda in it. Yeah. Kind of a spritzer sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. See, summer splashy fun right here. Yeah, so this is a flexible wine. Yeah, you can spritzer or some ice cubes in it, you know, very similar to say a sangria. Exactly. Yes, if you can't get all the right items together, you have a wine like this. Perfect, just throw some well, like a fruit slices in yeah, there, and you're yeah. good to go. So to me, it shows me the, the festive side of Peruvians. Yes, definitely. Um, it's just a, a, a wine you can just enjoy with the family, with friends, and on a hot day, nice and chilled, as well as uh, yeah, just at home. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's yes, a, drinking this, you really get that feeling that these are warm, fun-loving people. Definitely. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, I say cheers to those folks. Right. Cheers. <laughs> so here I am, flanked by two excellent gentlemen. We have fine Peruvian wine poured for us, and now the addition of excellent Peruvian food with which to pair it. For me, this is a supreme combination of elements. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining me, and let's talk about the food that we're going to be pairing. Tony, if you would please do the honors, starting with our first appetizer here. This is a ceviche. It's very typical Peruvian. It's a raw fish, which is marinated in lime juice, cilantro, peppers, a little bit of salt. So it just marinates with the lime juice. It cooks itself. It, so if we want to look at it as far as if it was meat, we want to look at it like it's maybe it's a medium or medium rare. Okay, all right. Very, very nice. So sort of a partially cooked. Partial Fish. Cook, correct. It's partially cooked, and this is probably the most, the two dishes that we have in front of you are the two most typical Peruvian dishes of them all. Okay, wonderful. So starting with the ceviche, Juan, let's talk about our pairing then, please. Well, we're pairing um, the ceviche with the Blanco de Blancos, Excellent. Um, which is a blend of Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Sauvignon Blanc. And the reason we pair it is because the Blanco de Blancos has a little bit of citrus notes on it, a little bit of acid, and some lime notes as well. So it'll complement the lime in the ceviche as well. So. All right, excellent. Well, bon appetit then. Well, that pairing was absolutely stellar. Food was superb. I loved the quality of the fish. 
as you said, partially cooked, it has just a lovely texture to it, bursting with flavor, the cilantro, the onions, this coconut milk, and of course the choclo, mm -hmm. my personal new Peruvian obsession, love that corn. And yes, the wine, lovely, balanced, brought out, and complemented those flavors so well. So now it's time for pairing number two. What have we here, Tony? They are called anticuchos. These are extremely popular in Peru, very typical. They are basically beef art kebabs that are marinated in Peruvian spices and peppers. Uh, the green sauce that you see is called guacatay. I know that some of these words are hard, but guacatay is a black mint sauce that we make here with a little bit of jalapeno and a grilled potato. Beautiful. Um, Peru is not known for their wines, and obviously I know my restaurant, I know my food here. And again, we are very well known for ceviches, anticuchos, and we've got up and coming wines. And Peru came out with a beautiful Malbec, that brand in Tipalca. I fell in love with it, and I think it's a perfect match for the Reds and the Peruvian food. If you want to try a full Peruvian fare. Yes, excellent. So your thoughts on the Malbec with the hearts? Well, um, as typical, it's um, a big red, so it's always nice to pair big reds with beef type of plates. But what's nice about um, the anticuchos is the spices that are part of it. Um, the marinade um, that just goes very well with with the Malbec. Yes, I do remember the berries that were coming out of this as we drank it, so that's gonna be beautiful with the spices. Okay, without further ado, let's do it. I wanna try this. <laughs> Normally in Peru, you buy this for I believe uh, equivalent to 25 cents to 50 cents wow. in a corner. There is a, a lady selling it to me and selling it, selling them in a, in a corner in a grill. Everybody flocks to the lady because of the smell, the smoke that these beef hearts give out. Okay, so this is how you normally eat it. You just normally just grab a stick and away with it. Oh, excellent. In my case, I'm gonna dig it out of the stick. <laughs> okay, but this is the way we normally eat them in Peru. Like again, in uh, right now, I'm just gonna take it out of the stick. But again, normally it's just. Yes, see, I'm picturing you at home on the couch right now with this whole thing, oh. just the stick in your mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, nothing wrong with that. No, I do that in the summertime. <laughs> a nice cold beer and a stick in my mouth. It's a guy's, <laughs> guy's move. But I am going to try this beef heart with this Melvick. I mean, it's definitely, it, it pairs extremely well. You have an extra glow about you at this moment. Oh, I, this is my favorite part of the meal. The, the anti, I, I have many wine tastings that I do here at the restaurant and in many of the restaurants, a few of the restaurants that we have. So I have gentlemen that come from Spain, from Chile, from Argentina to uh, obviously move their product. And I like to taste the wine with some of the food because that's what my customers are gonna be having. That wa their wine with my food. So what do I do every time they bring me a big red? I bring out the beef hearts. Or a New York steak. But the beef hearts is the best because I mean, being, being Peruvian, it has very strong flavors, gamey, yet it's soft and flavorful. So it brings out a lot of the, on the big reds. So this is my favorite piece of meat to tear with, taste with a big red wine. Okay, excellent. We're going to indulge along with you. Please, do help right. yourself. Excellent, thank you. I'll have to admit, the first time I've ever had beef heart is here at Rio's. And I was a little hesitant, I have to admit. Psychologically, I struggled mm -hmm. a bit. But it is delicious. And our server at the time said, you won't even know that it's a heart. You will think it's just an excellent, succulent piece of beef. And he was exactly right. And this with the Malbec, this is crazy good. It's, it's the perfect stack up against the, the nice spices and the richness of, of the heart. Beautiful. Delicacies continue. We are kicking off this round with a lovely fish dish, moqueca de pescado. Tony, please tell us about this lovely thing. Sure. Um, this is a mahi mahi that is uh, steamed with coconut milk, garlic, olive, onions, tomatoes, peppers, and yuca. Yuca is also called cassava, and obviously served with a pyramid of white rice. We get the biggest kick out of the rice pyramid. It's such a nice touch. Everybody does. <laughs> I like it myself. Okay, and so with this lovely Mahi Mahi, our wine pairing of choice is? It's the Intipalca um, Chardonnay, um, because it sees oak, and so because of the coconut flavors that are in the fish, it's and some of the vanilla flavors that are in the Chardonnay, it's just gonna be a nice combination. 
um, just a nice pairing. Yeah. Excellent. Let us indulge. So here we clearly have a little trio of treats. What might these be, Tony? Sure. We call these bombones de lomo with a Malbec reduction. Bombones are obviously, for us, we translate that, are just uh, filet bonbons. We call them bonbons because of the brown, obviously, being the red meat. And inside, we stuff them with provolone cheese, seasoned provolone cheese, topped with a Malbec reduction. Nice. This is an appetizer, and then topped with Parmesan cheese. So they're extremely flavor, a lot of strong flavors and sweet flavors. The next one there is we call lomo saltado. It is a, it's a stir fry that we, it's very typical in Peru. This particular dish has sirloin, onions, tomato, with a little bit of soy and vinegar, and we saute that in a high heat. That is our, one of our fusions that our friends from Asia brought into Peru after World War II. It became a, a very popular dish. This, it's just, we made up at home and we liked it. This is our real spe real special. This is, this is a family concoction? It sure is. It's actually mine. <laughs> I, I love that it. That is really cool. Yeah, I liked it. And uh, I'm a big fan of Melbic wines. So I thought about I need to create something that uh, I incorporate the Melbic wine into. So I decided to make a Melbic reduction with these tenderloins and it came out fabulous. Excellent. I love looking at that reduction. Just you can just see the juices and the wine. That's slurpable on oh, its yeah. own right there. Absolutely. So starting with the, the bombonis, let's talk about the, the Malbec pairing then with that. Now with the Malbec pairing and the bombonis, um, since it has a Malbec reduction as well as its meat, it's just a, a great um, match um, with the Malbec um, red. The Malbec has some chocolate notes, it's got some smokiness as well, which will go very well with the dish. If we move on to the next dish, and we move on to our next wine, which is again with the Lomo, we like to pair that up with a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, there are more intense flavors in the Malbec and so are on this beef. But then again, the Lomo also have in intense vegetables and the soy and the onions. And actually, I forgot, there is a Peruvian little hot pepper in there, but it's not that hot, but it gives it flavor. And that's why I would definitely like to go with a Cabernet when I order a Lomo. Yeah, very nice. A lot of a variety of flavors there and you want a, a fuller body wine to kind of stack up to that. Absolutely. Yeah, it has, to, had, it has to meet its match, it as sure it were. Does. And what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are on, on this Cabernet. It's a medium-bodied Cabernet, but it's got some earth tones, um, earthiness to it, um, as well as some um, nice oak and toasted notes on it, which goes great with the smoky flavors and the nice um, vegetables and the meat. That's with the Lomo Saltado. Okay, fantastic. Sounds like a couple of perfect pairings here. Salud. Salud. This evening has been absolutely top-notch in every respect. It's amazing how the food and the wine play off of each other's strengths, and together they create this amazing synergy that you can hardly describe. It's more like your palate just experiences it, and you know. Don't you know, Juan? Like, deep down, you, you just feel it. Yes, definitely, um, because it's always um, it's a blend of different cultures. Um, when it comes to Peruvian food, um, Asian culture, Italian culture, and obviously the Indian culture in Peru. But also the, the food makes the wine, the wine makes the food. Um, so it's always great to just experience a new style of wine. And Peru is definitely starting to make its way and you know, carving um, its way into what's, what's known as the big wine industry here in the United States. And the crew and myself are both half Asian, we're half Korean, and over dinner we commented to Juan and Tony about how several of the dishes here at Rio's are reminiscent of Korean flavor profile. So I love this international network, and then on top of it you have the wine, which is the ultimate bond. Right, and definitely, I mean, for our Lomo Saltado, it comes from Asian influences. Um, our ceviche, kind of a mix of a little bit of sushi, um, cooked in lime juice, and you know the wines, it's it. They speak for themselves when it comes to pairing it with the dishes that are, are offered here at Rios. For sure. And Juan, we cannot thank you enough. Your guidance was invaluable. You helped us achieve a new level of, of flavor and palate pleasure. So for that, sir, we're very grateful. Thank you. And thank you for your time, and thank you for having us. Um, be a part of, of your growing um, group and 
and your interest in the Addison um, businesses. Well, thank you. And uh, something to wind about friends, trust that you'll be seeing Juan again soon on a future episode for sure. Right, Juan? We can yes, tell him that, right? I hope so. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> for sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. What a marvelous look into the world of Peruvian wine. Again, Peru, not a wine region that most of us were even aware of, and yet their flavor profile matches that of the more well-known mainstream wine-producing regions. There are so many lovely layers to Rios that a return trip is indeed warranted. So we will be back. Next time, we'll be delving further into their menu to really explore the full flavors of South America that Rios has to offer. So another journey awaits us, friends, not to be missed. Salud! Mm -hmm.